up everyone, Katie from MB Tennis. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. Today we have a racket review and with this racket review, I am bringing you guys the Selenko Whiteout 305 16 by 19. So without further ado, let's jump into it. But before we get there, do not forget to like and subscribe. If you're really enjoying the content, that like and subscribe means a lot to the channel. It really helps us. And of course, leave a comment. If you would like to, let me know what you think about all of our content, and especially what you think after you watch this review. All right guys, so the Selenko Whiteout, what did I think? There is a lot to unpack here. These are some rackets that I think that are kind of flying under the radar. Um, this one, this specific one came out, I think just over a year ago or about a year or something like that. And um, they've done a good job, I can say. This racket definitely is able to compete with all the rackets that are out there today. Before I really jump into like the specifics and what I thought, thanks to Selenko for sending me uh, a couple of rackets that I'll be sharing with you guys. This is one of them, so thanks so much guys, appreciate it. It was fun to test this one out. Once again, this is the 16x19 version. I strung it up with my uh, preferred string, Selenko Confidential, and I did string it a couple pounds tighter because that is what was recommended by a couple people that I saw and some people that I know uh, to string this one a couple in, a couple inches, a couple pounds tighter. So I can say that stringing it tighter I think was uh, important and did actually help me have a better play test. So anyway, what did I think? The first thing, I really enjoy this cosmetic. Um, they kind of have this like matte kind of smooth feeling around the, the, the throat uh, neck area. And then as you move into the top of the racket, uh, it becomes kind of glossy. So that's really cool. I like how they have both of that. Sometimes with matte or like this kind of, I don't know if it's, it's not really matte. It's like, um, it's just not gloss. Let's just say that. And it's not that feeling that um, the old counter veil like pro staffs used to have. Like it's that feeling that a lot of the head rackets have right now. I don't know what that's called. I probably should know, but I don't. Uh, I, I like that feeling. Um, a couple things to note here with these these whiteouts. I'm not sure if the blackouts have this, but they have this 40T carbon, and what that means is essentially the carbon that is used to make these frames um, is way uh, tougher and a better, more solid material. I think around. I guys, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments here, but. I could be wrong, regular carbon that is made in sports equipment I think is around 20 or something like that. So this is, this is interesting and it's supposed to create some more stability. Also I believe these rackets are foam filled so that's interesting to, to keep in mind as well. But anyway, what did I think about it? Uh, the first thing that I noticed is this grip shape. Coming from a head racket, you guys know that I use my Extreme Taurus, this grip shape is quite different and I actually found it's a little bit shorter like when I compared it to my extreme tours it was probably about half an inch shorter I have no idea why but it was felt a little bit thicker and a little bit shorter so I got the 4 and 3 8 grip I use a 4 and 3 8 grip I don't know what happened there but I felt like on my backhand like see how high my hand goes up here that's like almost touching the grip tape up here so that was something that I didn't really enjoy right off the bat. I felt like I didn't have a, really like enough space for my back end on my top end. But that's just one little minor thing. I don't really love this grip shape either. It kind of feels like a Wilson racket. Not that Wilson rackets are bad at all. Um, I just, I prefer the, um, the more, the, I like the head, I like head rackets, how they have that more, um, I think it, I feel like head rackets grips are more smooth, but I could be wrong on that too. It's just a personal choice. Some people love the Wilson and, and I'm sure they love the, the way these Slinko grips feel. But anyway, from the back on forehand, this racket, it comes out of the string bed pretty, it's pretty responsive. Like it comes, it kind of shoots out. Some people really like that. I'm kind of in between. It depends on the racket. I thought it came out quite quickly. If you like the slap, this racket is like king. Like I could get away with some really nice slap forehands that were like lasers. Um, and I was also able to create some nice topspin as well. Um, right off the bat, I was kind of able to notice that. Um, 
for a 16 by 19 racket that's a 98 square inch it really it really offers a lot of a lot of juice um, like if I compare it to my extreme tour like it has more power than that for sure it kind of reminds me of a head speed meets pro staff meets um, yeah, like a head speed MP and a pro staff kind of combined. Um, I feel like, like I was talking about earlier, like the throat and the grip really feels like a pro staff. This has more power than a, than a pro staff though, and maybe doesn't feel as good on some touch shots, but it really reminds me of those kind of rackets if they were kind of like had a baby, if you know what I mean. So forehand was overall pretty solid. M one of my more favorite shots to hit with this racket. Um, was able to hit some spin, was able to hit some flat shots. I just felt at times that it was coming out of the string bed pretty quick and I wasn't maybe necessarily able to control it as much uh, as I would have liked compared to some other rackets. It didn't do a terrible job with this. If you're, if you like a racket where the ball kind of flies out of there, like maybe you're used to like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a racket that replicates this, but if you like that feeling, then I think you'll really enjoy this on the forehand. So that we're kind of done on the forehand now. On the backhand is where it kind of let me down, I think on the topspin side of things. Um, I felt like I could really rip it like a backhand flat, but I, if I wanted to add a little like tight spin, as I like to call it, um, it, it was kind of tough to do so. And I think that was actually because of the grip. I felt like I didn't have as much movement and I couldn't really like, move around with my wrists um, because I feel like when I have a little bit more of a, a bigger grip um, I'm able to do that a bit more but one thing to note like my hands are really big so this grip might be completely fine for like somebody that's shorter or smaller hands or whatever right so that's just this is just my opinion but overall I mean there was nothing really wrong about the back end these are just little nitpicky things that like if I was gonna to switch to this racket, like why wouldn't I switch to it? It would become, become it would be because some of these things. So back end felt a little bit off in that sense. I couldn't get quite the amount of top spin that I was liking. However, with that being said, the backhand slice, for some reason, this is the best racket I've hit on the backhand slice other than my head extreme tour. And it's arguably better. I don't know why. I don't know how. I think it has something to do with this 40T carbon in the foam filled. That's something that I do want to talk about of this carbon stuff that they have here. The racket was extremely stable on all hits in the center, off center. I don't know if other play testers have had similar experiences like me with that, but I found that I didn't even need to add weight. Like, Selenko actually was nice and they sent me the weighted butt caps. I didn't even need to put that in this racket. Normally I'm somebody, as you guys know, I like to customize all the demos I get. I like to try everything, right? And I didn't even feel like I needed to customize this to make it feel good. So out of the box, this feels really, really solid, especially in the hoop. So well done. Um, I feel like a lot of rackets these days, you kind of need to customize to get to your spec. And this one for me was extremely stable and I like to add weight to 39 and I did not have to do that at all. And I think it's probably because of that foam filled stuff in this 40T carbon. So really, really good job. I just wanted to mention that like extremely rare that I feel like that happens nowadays. But now that we hit some ground strokes, the back end slice, like I said, I thought was amazing. Volleys were overall pretty average, I think. There was nothing glaringly wrong that I, I didn't like. However, there was nothing that was absolutely incredible. I felt like I was able to hit some nice drop volleys, some nice, you know, deep put away volleys. I mean, nothing super special at the net. It, it got the job done. Let's just say that. Especially Sam on overheads. It felt good there. Um, the only other thing I'm thinking now, on serve and return, it was pretty stable. I would say I was able to get just enough pop as I would like, very comparable to my Extreme Tour, some other rackets that I've, I've tried in the past. Um, I do feel like if I really swung after it, like on a flat serve, I was definitely maybe even able to get a little bit more pop on a flat serve. I don't know why, it just felt like it was coming off the racket pretty good, and maybe that's because I it was slingshotting a little bit more like I was talking about on the forehand 
Um, it had a little bit of that on the serve, which is not a bad thing if you're really going for some heat. I was able to, you know, get, get some slice serves going, some kick serves going, no problem. And, and on return, it was very kind to me, especially when more uh, harder serves were coming. I like, I like having that nice chip backhand or that chip forehand. Like I said, on the slice and stuff, this racket was a beauty and incredible. So no knocks there. Um, and on the block returns, it was, it was good. Nothing bad at all either. Uh, the only knock, other knock I would have would probably be the uh, maneuverability. For some reason, I went to go hit one like on the run forehand and it didn't click with me. Sometimes you have rackets that are like, you just feel like they're tough to kind of wield around. And this was one that I felt like, and it's so strange. It's all personal preference too as well. Like this racket came in stock and I didn't even add any weight to it, but I just felt sometimes it was tough to maneuver it like on the run on the forehand or like moving to the backhand quickly. Um, it just felt a tiny bit slow. Um, but other than that, this is a great frame. Um, this is a sleeper out there for sure. I think everybody's got to try this one, especially if you're in that 98 kind of square inch realm. So if you've tried Radicals, if you've tried Extreme Tours, if you've tried the Speed MPs, even if you're coming from a tweener racket, I think this is an excellent choice. Um, because after you have, you know, those pure drives, uh, the, the arrows, you have like even uh, like E-Zones or V-Cores, right under that is this racket with as far as like the power, um, the power element of rackets, you could say. This is not quite as much as those rackets, but not, this one definitely has more power as a 98. So I think this is definitely a good frame. I really like the cosmetic pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that's my review guys. Enjoyed it. Thank you again, Selenko for let, sending these to me and letting me try them and review them to you guys. Um, also, there's going to be another Selenko racket coming very soon too. We'll keep that on the DL for now. And uh, we'll be showing you guys that one in the next week or so probably. And I'm excited to do that one as well. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. This is the Selenko Whiteout 305 16 by 19 four and three eights with Selenko Confidential in it. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Do not forget to like and subscribe and thanks for stopping by.